Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about the camshaft that we're going to be used for the dyno mule. In this video, you're going to get some technical information about camshafts that maybe you did or did not know. And then I'm also going to throw in some of my opinions. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. But this one should be interesting. Hopefully you get something out of it. So let's get started. First off, I'm going to give a little bit of the camshaft basics. And I mean very, very basics. Um, this camshaft right here came from Mike Jones. This is not the one that's going to be used for the dyno mule, but it's a, uh, it's, I used this in the 2009 Engine Master Challenge. This is the one that's going to be used for the dyno mule, and I'm going to tell you about some of the differences because it kind of makes a difference, um, plays a play, part anyway. This camshaft right here is a standard small block Chevy core, and what I mean by that is that these journals right here are the same size as it would be on a stock 350 cam, um, journal, I mean, stock 350 engine would have these same cam journals, same with a 400, pretty much any small block would have these size cam journals. Well, if you remember when I showed the video about the block, this block that we'll be using for the dyno mule has a big block Chevy cam core because it's the Dart SHP Pro, which means it doesn't have this size. It has the bigger big block core. So you might say, well, what's the advantages or disadvantages of running that? Well, here's the big one. This notch right here, you see right here, that's this size. So this notch right here is the standard cam core size. So you can see how much larger it actually is, okay? The reason why it's got a notch here at the front is for the timing chain. Um, so you can run a regular standard small block Chevy cam, um, timing chain on there, but the journals are bigger. The biggest advantage for this, if this journal's bigger, I can now put a bigger lobe in here because if, if you look at it like this, this standard cam core size, there's only so big of a lobe you can put in. And what I mean by lobe is these are the lobes. Period, that's the biggest it's gonna fit. And I wanna say on a standard one, and I'm probably gonna get this wrong, I think it's like a 480-ish is about the biggest you could put on a standard cam core size. Um, that's about it. That's still making a really small base circle and it just, it, it's tough to fit in there, but they do fit and it will fit through. It's just not ideal, but that's the biggest lobe. On a big block core, I think uh, it's 515, so you can go much bigger. Maybe you can go a little bit more than that. Someone probably would chime in with it. That's a that's about right. So the one advantage of being that is that you could put a bigger, bigger lobe in. The second advantage is this, in a way, because this one's going to get you in a second. Ideally, when you go from a smaller, from a standard cam core to a bigger cam core usually this entire shaft itself gets bigger. And what's the advantage of that? Well, this doesn't probably get talked about as much, but we talked, I have a video about deflection and a lot of people have watched it where I open the valve and I show how much lift you're actually losing with real springs. That's in the rocker arms, push rods and everything else. But another thing that will also give up and deflect is the core itself. Because maybe as this one's opening, it's pressing against the spring and this one's pressing against the spring and this whole entire core is going to flex especially at RPMs, which means your cam timing events are going to change from what it actually is on the cam card. So that, and, and also it could put um, extra stress in the valve train. So even when it's spinning, it's also gonna flex the other way. And that energy can be, then be thrown back into the valve train at the wrong time, causing valve flow just from the core. Um, point being is, that's those are the extreme scenarios, but point is, Usually, a bigger core helps with flexing, and that's less of an issue. However, if we go to a small block Chevy, this is kind of a weird thing. and kind of sucks in this way. This has a big block Chevy cam core, but this is the barrel. It's pretty much the same size as this. And you might be like, why didn't they make it larger? Here's why. The disadvantage on a small block Chevy is... Um, the cam to rod clearance. So if we put this in a block, the rod's gonna come up and it's gonna try to hit the lobe if you've got, like you stroke the engine. Oh, and for all of you out there, please stop saying stroker. If you just say 427 small block Chevy, we already know it's stroked. If you say 383 small block Chevy, we already know it's stroked. Please stop saying stroker. But anyway, as you add stroke, you're gonna put the um, rod closer to the cam. And on a small block Chevy, it's going to touch. So, as cool as it is to have this big old journal here, so you could put a bigger lobe in, the disadvantage is on a big block itself, you would have a much bigger barrel because the rods are farther away from the cam itself. 
so I can put a bigger barrel. On a small block Chevy, on the other hand, you can't because if you did a bigger barrel, that puts it closer to the rod and the rod will actually hit the cam. So we have to do something called a small base circle. So in other words, they move this base circle, they grind it closer to the actual barrel to get more clearance. So in a way, cool, you got a big block cam core, you can put a bigger lobe in, but you're still stuck with the same size barrel as that one. But you can run a bigger lobe. Now, you might say, well, why did you pick it? Again, I already had the SHP Pro block. That's what I was gonna use, so that's what it is. So there's a little bit of technical information for you. I'm gonna show you something else too. This is a billet core and so is this. And you're like, no, it's not. That one doesn't look the same. Now, not all billet cores look the same. So as you can tell, this one's got a little bit of copper color. This one is not, they're not always that way. Both are billets, I'll go ahead and tell you. But here's something else. When you run a billet core on the back on a small block Chevy, you usually have to run a bronze gear on the back or a composite gear, unless you do like this one. So I'm showing you guys this. This one is a billet core, but it's not the same. This one has a pressed in cast gear, because if you look at the back here, that's the journal and it's pressed into the core. Let me set it back down. And they slide this um, distributor gear over and they pin it and that's cast. So you can have these where you have a billet core and they press a cast gear in the back. The benefit to this is now you can run a cast gear on your distributor. So let's say you brought like, say for instance, the Holly Hyperspark. It's gonna come with a cast gear. But if you got a cast gear here, you don't gotta change your gear. Most billets will not come that way. It actually costs quite a bit more to do this. And then in the long run, it's actually cheaper to put the bronze gear on the distributor than it is to do that. Um, but that is an option, so I wanna go through that. Otherwise, like this one, it's gonna to have to run, this is, this is all the way through, it does not have press, press gear. It's gonna be bronze or composite gear. So bronze, you're using all billets unless they've got the pressed in cast gear. Cast gear, you can only use with the cast gear. So just a little lesson for you. Composite, you can use for either one. You might say, well, why don't everybody just use composites? One, they're more expensive, and two, I have to say this. When bronze wears out, you'll get signs of bronze in the, in the pan. So you get the idea, oh, my distributor's kind of wearing. And the cast iron, um, typically they don't wear to me. And neither really does the bronze to me. But typically when they wear, it just goes and gets trapped in the filter. When a composite fails, it has a bunch of little shrapnel that goes through the engine, which so does the others. But typically to me, I've seen more composite gears fail than I ever have bronze or cast. And that's in my experience. So there's a little bit more tech for you. Anyway, I've gone a little bit long on this, but just giving you more information. So there's some of the information about the cam. Now, this is an Urson cam. Here's my sheet on it and everything for it. Then you might say, why did you pick an Urson cam? Because I thought you mostly did with comp. I do. Um, I sell custom comp cams, custom grinds. They run $600 between six and 700 really. And you're like, man, that's really expensive. Yes, they're all custom. I love comp cams, I'm just gonna say it. And I like Urson too. Um, I'm gonna get through all the stuff. The reason why I like comp so much is they have such a, I don't know if any other cam company has the, quite the variety of lobes that are available that comp does, um, which is great. Um, been dealing with them a long time and they're really nice to deal with. They've got a far more variety. So you might say, well then what did, what's with Urson? Well, almost a year ago, the guy that, that Urson, he had contacted me and said, hey man, I like your videos. If you ever need anything, just let me know. Now, I also do sell Urson cams um, because I have a PBM account, which is what Urson's through, and I can I I can sell those cams. I typically just haven't because everybody just gets the custom one that from that I get, and I usually spec the ones from Con. However, I do like Urson cams. I've never had any problem with them ever. And he and Urson will tell you themselves they don't have near the variety of lobes that Comp does. Um, they just don't. And, but one benefit, and it's a huge benefit, is customer service. If you are wanting a camshaft and you don't want to spend the six or seven hundred bucks, it's much easier to talk to an actual person at Urson Cams, like an actual person that does camshafts, than you ever will with comp. So what happens is, I know this because a lot of guys will call me and say, um, hey, I got this comp cam 12 dash, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Whenever you tell me a part number, I don't have a clue what none it is. Tell me this sheet. But even then, they'll ask me which one you want to, I want to 
which one should I get? And really what they're trying to say is, I don't want to wait an hour and a half on hold with comp cams. Can you just tell me the answer so I can buy it from them? I'm not comp cams tech line. But when you call Urson, you will get someone and they're going to talk to you and help you out. So that's a, to me, a customer service by far Urson. Do I have to deal with that with comp? No, because I just know all that stuff and spec it myself and just send an email and it's done. But Urson, great company, nice to deal with. Their camshafts, and the reason why I picked them to use anyway, uh, is because once what you're about to see is this camshaft is probably closer to what you guys use. So I have to say when I usually spec comp stuff, I usually pick more aggressive side stuff because it's going to match usually with a cylinder head. So usually whenever I sell a person a ported set of cylinder heads, I'm going to do a camshaft with it so it matches. I am more aggressive than usual. However, I know most people go right in the middle. So they don't want something too aggressive. They want something that's tame um, and for sure tamer than normal. And Urson's camshafts, they do have some that are more aggressive, are about in that ballpark. Perfect for the bracket racer guy and that sort of thing. So this camshaft is more tame than um, usually the ones I sell. And the makes it perfect for the dyno mule. Because one of the things I do not want to deal with when I'm making this engine run and everything, when I'm testing things, the one thing I don't want to have happen is valve train control issues because the camshaft is really aggressive. So um, this makes a great benefit. So I'm fairly certain that this one is going to be nice and calm for what I'm doing. And also, when we're going to get through the specs here in a second, it's probably closer to what you guys will probably use. It's a nice generic one. So it's perfect. When you look at it, it's it's not it's by the way it's not the slowest ramps that they have by far, and so and it's also not the most aggressive. I would say it's right in the middle, which is perfect for what we're doing here. So anyway, let's get to the specs. So Urson has this cam sheet, and this is I'll tell you one other big advantage of Urson in just a minute. Um, this is the specs for it. So we have a 260 on the intake. It's got a 430 low, but run a 16 rocker, which brings the lift to about yeah you guessed it 688, which is like oh my gosh that's a lot of lift. Take out the lash, which is 22, you're about 650-ish, a little bit more, but still get the idea. That's the intake. The exhaust is 270. It also has a 430 lobe, so about the same lift. So we have a 260, 270. This is going to be a pump gas deal, and it's going to have about 11 and a half to 1, and I asked him to put it on a 108 lobe separation, which is somewhere on here. I don't see where right, right off, but it's somewhere here on this sheet. Anyway. It's on a 108, but I had them grind it with two degrees advanced built in, so it's going to be installed at a 106. Why the 108? It's right in between. If this was more geared towards circle track, I'd probably put it in like a 106 LSA and install it like a 104 or 103, um, just so it gets more torque off the corners. If it's more of a street deal, it'd have like a 110, so 108 seems like it fits right in the middle. So that's why it's got a 108 LSA. For whatever reason, I can't see it on here. It is on this. See, it says 108 plus two. Anyway, that's the specs for it. But here's something that's really, really cool about Urson. When you order an Urson cam, they do something that comp doesn't do. They cam doctor every cam that goes out. This is a cam doctor sheet. And let me explain what a cam doctor is. You can get cams, and I've showed you before, you can get cams and then we'll have all your duration and stuff on the on the sheet, on your cam card here. I just moved it. And you think this is what it is. Oftentimes, they are not. You will get a camshaft and even though it might say 260 degration, it might be 264. So even though the cam card says one thing, it doesn't mean exactly what it is. If you watched some of my videos before, I cam doctored the one that actually went into that 406 that got built and the old one that was in there. And you can see they're off a little bit from the cam card, but not bad. Urson actually gives you a cam doctor report on the cam for each cam they sell. This is it. So let me explain because this gives you way more information than just that. This first one is the exhaust. So this is the exhaust. Okay. It even tells me exactly. So what they did is they put this on a special machine. The cam doctor is a special machine that actually measures the exact amount of each, each and every vent of each lobe and puts it out on the sheet. Not just what the cam, what it's supposed to be, what it actually is. So if we look here, this is the exhaust side. It tells you it's 108.3 lobe separation is what we're gonna have, okay? And at 105.7 is when all the vents are, the center line, so it's not quite 106, but it's really close. 
these are all the lobe lifts. So it tells you actually the maximum lift, the actual lobe lift is actually 0.434. So a little bit more than what the 430 of the cam card says. This tells you the amount of duration of time it spends at each one of the lobe lifts. You know, like 430, remember to multiply it by the 1.6 and you'll have your lifts at each one of these events. So if we look, most people deal with 50 thousandths for cam timing. It's supposed to be a 270, it's actually 271.12, awesome. What a lot of people do is they look at this 200 number because from a 50 to 200 number, you could tell how aggressive in general, not in general, I say, not always, on how aggressive the actual opening ramp of the camshaft is. So if it's got a lot there, you're like, man, this thing's really getting after it, opening it up. So in other words, this is 271 and 184. That's, that's pretty tame. If you had like, say, a 194 here, you know, in the same duration here, you knew that this thing is opening very quickly and you'd have more duration at all these points here too. Which means like you would think, well, why don't they do that? Well, it sounds great on paper. There's a disadvantage of opening the valve too fast. One of them is, yes, I'd like to open it as fast as possible, but everything has to be under control. So sometimes when you open it too fast, what happens is all you do is add deflection. So it sounds like you would have more on paper of all that, but really it all gets deflected and then it gets thrown back into the system and you're more likely to go to a valve float and you never really got those duration numbers anyway. Spintron could tell you that. So anyway, it tells you all those and that's that. This is the intake side. So we look at 50,000, it's actually 259.52, not 260, very close. And then you look at 200, it's 178. So you could tell it's got a much, you know, it's a, a little bit more aggressive load probably on the um, intake than it is the exhaust. Still very calm compared to what others are. Um, someday I'll pop out the one for the small block Chevy and show you it. that one then that was in the truck. That one's aggressive. So there's that. Peak lift 0.4274. So a little bit less than 430. And it tells you all that. Now, that's the camshaft. I think it's going to be a nice generic camshaft. I know some of you are already saying, how are you going to measure all the stuff with the cylinder heads? If you're not changing camshafts, you're not getting the best things out of it. No, this camshaft is pretty much going to be it. It's going to be the one used for the majority of the testing because that's pretty much what you guys are going to run. It's right in the middle for what most of you are doing on a 406. I'm going to pump gas deal. Perfect. Now, let's talk about the lifters. Because it's an, a uh, Dart SHP Pro block, it also has 904 lifters. So you're like, what's that mean? This is a Morel lifter, and this is a standard diameter, 842. This is the BAM 904. The wheel on an 842 is smaller than the one on 904. 904 is because it has a bigger wheel, usually has bigger axles, and they are stronger. So it's a huge advantage for that. Now these ones from BAM, this is what I'm using, is going to, it does have needles. Um, I didn't do any of the bronze bushing or even the dlc coated steel one just because for this steel it's not going to have any idle time and idle really is what kill li kills lifters even though it's pressure fed and all that it's the idle time that kills them um because of that i'm not so much worried about it eating a lifter so on being just dyno runs it should be fine i don't i it's gonna be fine anyway big old lifter like this it's great by the way if you're a big block chevy the small block chevy diameter is the same one that you're using yeah and we use to put way more spring pressure anyway you might say, why did you pick BAM then? Because I thought you run Morels. These are Morels. And the Camaro, I have a 904 Morel. And the S10, the engine that was in the S10, they were 904, uh, sorry, 842 Morels as well with needle bearings. And I have had zero problems with them, period. They've been really, really good. And you might say, well, well then why are you switching to BAM? And this is where my opinion comes in. I liked Morels, solids. I hated their... Uh, hydraulics and morels only sell to they only sell to a few warehouses that then sell to us vendors that then sell to you guys so it's adding another middleman in a way that they only deal with and if you ever want to get any actual technical advice from morel not from one of the distributors from morel good luck good luck um and i say this because i didn't really have any problems ever with the solids the solid roller stuff's always been dependable it's the hydraulic roller stuff. The hydraulic roller stuff, the noise. People usually pick hydraulic rollers because they want, they don't, one, they don't want to adjust, and two, uh, they don't want them to be quiet. Because saw rollers, inevitably, because of lash, make noise. So they want them to be quiet. 
I've sold several sets and I tested several sets on the dyno, did a bunch of different things. They sound as loud or louder than a solid roller cam with their lifters. Um, Morel, I mean, I, I posted it out there. Many, 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 many others have posted out there. And one of the vendors for Morel said we were pretty much said we we're all idiots. We didn't do it. We didn't do anything right. One person being an idiot. Yeah. Two person being an idiot. A hundreds. Come on now. Come on. Come on, buddy. Yeah. And then their excuse was, well, we didn't have any returned. Well, just because an lifter makes noise and the hydraulic rollers doesn't mean necessarily someone wants to rip off their intake and replace the lifters. Um, also because of cost. So, and also, they just aren't going to return them if you're not going to do anything anyway. So, one of the things that they used, that one vendor, was that, well, none got returned, so everything's hunky-dory. I only had one set get returned, and that was a user error. Anyway, that one vendor burned me. I mean, he didn't personally, but it drove me crazy that it wouldn't accept the problem. It just acknowledged the problem. Um, so, because of that... Myself and many others looked for alternatives. So now for hydraulic roller stuff, unless it's super cheap heat and they don't really care about the noise, I'll try to do the High Lift Johnsons or Gatorman. Um, for solid rollers, even though Morel had a quality product, I've switched to BAM. And the real reason is BAM stuff, one, is quality, good stuff. And the biggest reason, customer support. If you ever talk, talk to Brad at BAM, he will give you answers, he will work with you, he will talk to you, he's an actual person. He's the, you know, the person in the company, not the distributor to the distributor you have to talk to. Excellent to deal with. I can't be more proud of dealing with uh, Brad at BAM. So yes, I sell more BAMs because both, both of these are quality. These are solid rollers, obviously. Both are quality. Both of them will do fine for every application. So if you're looking at them and you're like, what about cost? They're both about the same cost. I think Morel's a little bit more expensive. What about availability? <sighs> the one thing about Morel is you will never get an ETA exactly when this stuff will be. Bam, absolutely. So they might be back to order, but at least you know when you're gonna get them. Customer service, I'm gonna go with Bam. So why do I start selling more Bams? Because of that. There's no more money in it. It's not like I make more money selling one or the other. It's customer service. Both a quality product. Both about the same. Well, really, BAM's more available. Um, customer service. Just, just saying. So, yeah, I like BAM, so I'm going to keep using them. Until I have a failure and I say, and BAM doesn't address it, or it's something that's an obvious flaw, um, I'm going to keep using BAM. And I still like Morel Hydro, um, Solid Rollers, so if you have them, don't throw them away. They're good stuff. I'm just I'm trying to phase them out to go to this. I mean, obviously, I used them for quite a while in the S10 and in the Camaro now, so they're not bad. I just, I think BAMs are where I'm going now. So the new engine for the truck does have BAMs. But anyway, there's all your information. That, by the way, is all opinion because I, mean, I can already feel the comments coming in. So anyway, I hope we got some idea of what I'm doing with the camshaft here. If you got questions or things you'd like to know, I'll be happy to answer them as best as my, my ability. But I want to thank Urson again for copping up the camshaft. Um, they do good stuff. If you would have bought the order an Urson cam, I'm a dealer for them. So if you like the um, like a shelf Urson cam, I'll sell it to you. But usually, I said before, I'm usually custom cams for Calm. Um, but if you want an Urson, I can do that too. Um, anyway, hopefully you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.